stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the cap and hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some raise like Simba, or crack like the Beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need pre-wish Stay at home, Disney Dad The Little Mermaid 2, the sequel to arguably the best Disney movie ever made. My whole body is tense. Before we start, I gotta talk about the cover of Little Mermaid 1. I don't know what order I'm posting these, but I know when I reviewed the original Little Mermaid, I didn't talk about the controversial cover art. Yes, the original VHS white clamshell cover infamously has a large boy part, smack dab right in the middle of the castle. It's kind of funny how obvious it is. Once you see it, you can never unsee it. It was a thing when it first came out in the 90s and there was this big urban legend that an angry animator was fired and he snuck that in as a payback and everyone at Disney denies that and claims it was nothing but a fluke and it was drawn by accident, but like every seventh grade uh, boy knows that no one draws one of those by an accident. What's the truth? Who's to say? All I know is if it was an innocent accident, why did they change it? Who knows? Little Mermaid 2. Okay, let's do this. Ariel has a baby named Melody. She sings to her daughter. They live on Prince Eric's giant ship and we're off. Opening song about how they already are already late for something. The fish world is alerted and we are reintroduced to the cast. Sebastian, Flounder, and the Mer people all take to the surface beside Prince Eric's ship to see the ceremony. King, King Triton shows up and dad is jacked. I mean, I'm not jealous because he's a merman, so it's all upper body. There's no leg day. I mean, I'd totally be that jacked too if I didn't have leg day, so. Triton gives Ariel's kid a lock and in surprise, quote, Ursula's crazy sister is here and it's skinny Ursula named Morgana. She kidnaps the baby, claims, quote, Ursula wanted to be here but something came up. Oh yeah, you all shish kebobbed her. That's pretty funny. She calls her lackey Undertow the shark. He takes the, she wants the trident in exchange for the baby. Uh, King Triton agrees. He knew Ursula did in seven minutes what took regular Ursula almost an entire movie. Prince Eric saves the day. The kid is rescued and new Ursula makes her escape but threatens to return. They vow that Melody nor Ariel will ever go into the sea again until Morgana is stopped. She vows this and Triton just kind of nonchalantly agrees and is like, all right, whatever. So there it is. Melody will never know about her mermaid heritage. The locket drops into the ocean, floats down like the heart of the ocean from Titanic, and we have a passage of time. Melody is now a spunky 12-year-old and Ariel still looks flawless and youthful. I should have raised my kids on a boat, I guess. The animation is a typical Disney sequel animation where it looks about 70% quality compared to their big pictures, but at one point the dog runs across the beach and he like flickers. I don't know if they ran out of time to properly animate him or if they just didn't care. Uh, Melody is underwater swimming away and breaks the surface kind of like her mom did in that iconic scene on the rock. Okay, that made me kind of smile. Scuttle's voice actor is nowhere near the same voice actor as the original. Sebastian scolds Melody as she swims in defiance and Sebastian pretty much looks right into the camera and says, you're just like your mother. Melody collects shells. Melody can sure hold her breath for a long time. She finds her old locket. You know, doing these reviews, you really notice subtle things like the score. This one has a typical score and sound effects like a regular, like, after-school cartoon. It's hard to explain, but it sounds like an episode of a regular Mickey Mouse or Goofy short and not a full-length movie. There's lots of, like, comedic stabs when something funny happens, and I keep thinking Pluto is chasing Chip and Dale and getting caught in a beach umbrella. All the kids at Melody's birthday party talk smack about her behind her back. Typical. Ariel is doing Melody's hair. Eric says, they are late. And Ariel says, give us two minutes. Eric looks right into the camera and says, two minutes, right. Where have I heard that one before? All right, calm down, buddy. Okay, in case you missed it, you married a magical sea creature who risked her life and gave up her voice for you. You marry her, you have a baby with this mermaid turned human, and now as a mom, 12 years later, she still looks exactly like she did when she was 16. Oh, but she takes forever getting ready. Women, am I right? Guess that was a joke for all the dudes watching this. Are there dudes watching this? At Melody's birthday, Sebastian accidentally pinches the one boy that's nice to Melody and everything goes to hell. People and tables fall over, there's a mess everywhere. 
Later, she's up crying in her room. Melody finally opens her locket and sees the magical orb that shows the mer people in their world. Ariel scolds her for disobeying and going over the wall, and I just know there must be a scene on the cutting room floor somewhere that was supposed to happen earlier in the movie where, in true Disney fashion, they warn Melody not to go over the wall. That's a foreshadowing staple of like every Disney movie, but it was missed in this one. Melody bails. The shark tells her to see Morgana and she can solve her problems. This plot is cut and paste from the original Little Mermaid, only reversed. Melody wants to be part of their world. Morgana sits with Melody, and I'm reminded these characters do not really exist in the regular Disney propaganda. Like, this movie never happened. I imagine there's one Disney exec that for some reason loves this movie. Like, this was their movie as a kid, and in every meeting, he or she constantly tries to convince the toy developers that they need Morgana and Melody toys and stuffed animals while everyone else around the table snickers, and then he or she spends the rest of the meeting pouting, but always goes home, fine tunes that pitch, and tries again next Wednesday afternoon. Anyway, Morgana makes Melody a mermaid, bam. Back on land, Eric convinces Ariel to become a mermaid and go find their daughter, and Ariel is hesitant and I'm really confused what the issue is. Like, girl, mermaid up and go find your daughter. That would be like me promising I'd never climb a ladder ever again, but then suddenly my child is on the roof and could fall off and I'm all like, I don't know, should I? Ooh, I promised. All right, Melody is a mermaid, she sings, and part of your world it ain't, but it's not horrible. This movie has no chance of succeeding following the first one. Sorry, it, it just didn't. I'd argue Little Mermaid is probably the toughest movie to make a sequel for out of all the classics, but here we are. They had to try. There is money to be made. Everyone can judge Disney all they want, but there's not a single person out there that would have said no to the dump truck full of money they offered to write this script, I bet. Morgana tells Melody about Atlantica, and she's surprised that it wasn't all made up, which is kind of odd because she didn't blink when she met an underwater half-woman, half-octopus witch doctor, but hey... For some reason, Melody is in an ocean with ice, and with the ice comes the comedic penguins and a walrus, and we are force-fed Tip the Penguin and Dash the Walrus. Why? I don't know. I speak for every fan of The Little Mermaid that ever existed that we would have much rather had a side story with Sebastian and Flounder than these new characters from... Hold on, I can never remember. Internet says penguins can live in both poles, but walruses only live in the North Pole. So they're in the North Pole? Like, by Santa? Why is Eric navigating his ship near the North Pole? Either way, I'll bet that poor Disney exec has a couple sad, hand-sewn, tip-and-dash stuffed animals he or she whips out at these meetings and puts on little plays. Hey, Tip, we all know no fan of Little Mermaid's collection we can delete without you and I. I hear you, Dash, old chum. And then one of their sad button eyes falls off and silently rolls off the side of the table. Okay, Melody hits Atlantis with the walrus and the penguin. She spots Grandpa Triton and she is supposed to steal the trident and give it back to Ursula's sister. That was the deal. Triton displays his trademark Triton anger and throws stuff. A fish tells Triton that Ariel is returned and he floats away leaving the trident which Melody steals. But then she drops her necklace. The only one that can move the trident is Triton or one of his descendants. So wait, Ursula was a descendant? Ariel notices Melody's necklace and it took 30 seconds for that drop necklace to play out. Melody has the trident and returns it to Morgana. When Flounder and Sebastian and Scuttle and Mermaid Ariel are all under the sea together, I should probably feel more feels. Ariel tries to stop Melody and sees Mom is actually a mermaid and a liar, so she hands the trident to Morgana. Morgana puts Melody in an underwater prison and tells her time being a mermaid is almost up, so the implication is that she will turn back to human any second and drown. Oof. Morgana explodes out of the water on this badass mirth throne and Ariel is her prisoner and Eric is like, no worries, I'll just use my ship again. And Morgana sinks Eric's ship. Yikes, Ursula didn't think of that. Flotsam and Jetsam drag Eric underwater and Ariel breaks free. Then we're back to Topper and the Penguin and Walrus. I don't know, I have completely forgotten about them. They fight Morgana's shark sidekick. Melody turns back into a human and is about to drown when the distracted shark smashes through her prison and frees her. Ariel saves Eric's life, who takes too long getting ready now, bitch and everyone is back on land. Morgana uses the trident and makes everyone bow to her, including Ariel. Interest in Morgana rising. This is good. Melody climbs up behind Morgana as she's taking, as she's making Triton bow to her. Melody grabs the trident and stabs Morgana in the tentacle and my spell check tried to change that to testicle. Triton gets the trident back and puts Morgana in carbonite and sends her spiraling into the ocean depths. Ariel says it doesn't matter if you have fins or feet, they love her for who she is. Melody uses the trident and breaks down the wall that separates their castle from the sea and the full orchestral part of your world starts playing and I lean forward about to close my eyes and bathe in the magic and memories of the first movie. Oh, the song immediately stops and Sebastian starts singing the laziest Disney song ever. But my own daughter gets up and starts dancing to it so either the song isn't actually that bad or I've failed as a parent. Probably both. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. 
personal 